Hi, welcome. It is my privilege to be here in New uh, Zealand at this time. I've been here a couple of weeks and in a special way I have the privilege of being with uh, Ross Patterson. Uh, this is a special opportunity to follow up on some very interesting developments. I was talking to him and we've been talking about biblical archaeology, some of the developments in the past, and especially uh, you've been aware of some of the developments with Ron Wyatt, some of the findings he's had, some of the things that he has found that we have not yet been able to confirm, but uh, everything that has been confirmable has been confirmed, and yet there's still areas to do further investigation which open up and confirm what God is doing, what He has done, and the veracity of God's Word. Ross, thank you for being here with me today. Thank you, David. I'm really glad to have you, and uh, you've been um, involved in biblical archaeology uh, from Ron's time with other people and other findings. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your interests and what you've done in the past. Well, um Yes, it goes back to the 1980s when I first heard about Ron White, and I didn't take a lot of attention, you know, pay much attention to it then, but after I heard a series of meetings about these topics, and then we invited him to Australia and New Zealand himself, and we heard him, it sort of became quite life-changing, because these are wonderful outreach tools. There's a lot of people out, particularly in Australia and New Zealand, who believe the Bible is a bunch of fairy stories. Now, when you present material like Here's the evidence of where the Red Sea Crossing was, and here's the remains of the Pharaoh's army on the seabed. Here's Noah's Ark, here's Sodom and Gomorrah. It brings the Bible alive. Correct. So we've been using it for that, mean, that means, and it's been very effective. We've had audiences in New Zealand of up to 300 people come and hear about these things, which is difficult in a secular you know, country like New Zealand, but it, this seems to break through and open doors. And of course, once you're sharing biblical archaeology, you know, this is Noah's Ark, what are you talking about? You're talking about Bible stories, so it's a big opening for sharing. Now, now you were you were involved in in uh, not only with the Ark, uh, Noah's Ark, but you've been involved in with the Red Sea Crossing. Yes. And uh, I, I understood recently you've done some work on that, yes. and also even going into the the tomb area, uh -huh. the garden tomb, and yes. where where Jesus uh, appear, apparently was buried. And from the yes. evidence, yes. Uh, everybody says here he was buried, there he was buried, all over the place. But but the evidence points more in this direction, yes. and it's exciting to think that our Lord uh, actually was there uh, and resurrected from there. But but uh, give us a brief idea of some of the projects you've worked on in the past. Okay. Yes, we've done a lot of diving in the Red Sea, for example. Um, I've done about a hundred dives here now myself in the water, and. To be totally fair, it's not like a museum on the bottom of the Red Sea, you can understand. <laughs> it's been three and a half thousand years since the Exodus. But you do find, we've got some footage of shapes in the coral, and a good friend of mine in Auckland here found a leg bone, a femur bone, from a human being that's been analysed, and dates back to that sort of time. Oh really? Yes. <laughs> and they found, Ron White found years ago, a horse's hoof in that location. So, the evidence is pretty compelling there. I'll tell you what has been really good is when you track through the Bible and figure out where would the Exodus route actually be, this is the best location of biblical evidence alone. And what's been found in the water is like the icing on the cake. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. Just the little tracings confirming the story, but there's still a lot more to be found. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Wow. Okay, so that's the, that's the Red Sea. Uh, what about what about in Jerusalem? Well. There's the garden tomb there in Jerusalem, and um, as you say, there's different options. If you go to Jerusalem, say, where's the tomb of Jesus? Some will point you this way and some that way. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Again, the Bible gives some great clues, and you can figure out from the Bible which is the most likely one. And Ron White began excavating there in 1980, 1979, I think it was, and found, well, he was looking for the Ark of the Covenant due to an experience he had. But during the excavation, he found the crucifixion site, it appears. And so, beneath that would be the Ark of the Covenant. Now, we might ask, why would the Ark of the Covenant be there? Um, as the Adventists, we know what the Spirit of Prophecy says. Prophets and Kings tells us that Jeremiah, the men in Jeremiah's day, hid the Ark in a cave in Jerusalem. That means it didn't go to Ethiopia <laughs> or anywhere else in the world. The most popular view is it went to Ethiopia, you might have heard that. Okay, yes, I've heard that. Right, but we know as Adventists that didn't happen. It was hidden by men in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. 1 BC, 1 Bible Commentary, page 1109, says the tables of stone will come out at some stage. Correct. 
Right, you know the quote, yes. I know. Yes. And so putting those two together, between it being hidden and the tables of stone coming out, God is going to have to have someone locate it. And I believe Ron White's done that. We will find out someday. Yes. It's not confirmable now, but since Ron Wyatt has always told the truth about what he found, yes. people may agree with him or may disagree that what right. he found was what he said he found, but it's there. Yes. He didn't invent anything. He didn't yes. make up anything. Anything that is that is able that we're able to look at today can still be found exactly like he found it. Exactly. I've been there 12 times to the Middle East. Okay. Everything that I can check out myself of what Ron Wyatt said is exactly as he says. I can't prove everything, but everything that I can do is exactly as he said. When there is opposition, and there is, and uh, different opinions, uh, that what I found lacking is that the opposition doesn't present any evidence. No. They just uh, provide opinions. Right. Uh, that's not good enough. No. Uh, if somebody goes and says, I've gone to exactly where he went and I found not, I did not find what he found, that would be some kind of evidence. But everybody sure. who's gone finds the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Including professional studies. <laughs> that's right. I mean, we've gone to the nth degree. For example, the Sodom and Gomorrah sites. We went there, took samples, found the sulfur balls, took samples, and brought them to a lab in New Zealand where they analyzed them. And one thing they said about that, when they analyzed them, they said, these are very clean. You know, and we said, what do you mean? And they said, well, there's very few trace elements in them. And you think through what happened at Sodom and Gomorrah, it was a big furnace. What happens when you analyze ash from a furnace? There's no trace minerals left, it's very clean. And so all uh -huh. our tests tied up with exactly what you'd expect. You see what I mean? Uh -huh. If yeah. these were just lake deposits of some pose. Oh, it'd be a little bit of everything. Exactly. It'd be like a big, exactly dried up soup. But it's not. The lab tests confirmed that this is from the furnace, it's ash effectively. So everything we can do confirms that these are indeed the signs. Mm, that's exciting. Now, um, even while we wait for God to reveal the next chapter, it's happening right before we, Israel just announced that they're doing a, a, a very intensive investigation in the caves of Zedekiah under Jerusalem. Uh -huh. uh, we know that there's high level uh, administration in the antiquities department that know what Ron Wyatt found. Yes. Uh, my dad spoke with the director of antiquities, the same one that Ron Wyatt had spoken with years ago. And, uh, and even though they, they don't want to acknowledge that that happened, on the other hand, there's video of them talking together and he said, well, that is me, you know. Right. And, and so uh, we have these exciting things happen, but, but at this moment in time, it is not possible to go verify the Ark of the Covenant because uh, God will determine that timing. Yes. But all the rest of the findings, it yes. is possible. Now you're going to yes. be you're going to be doing in a couple of months something very exciting. Tell us more about that. Okay, thank you, yes. Ron Wyatt didn't find Noah's Ark, but he refound it, if you know what I mean. It was okay. spotted years and years ago, 1959. And people looked at it briefly and thought, it doesn't look like what we're expecting. Ron Wyatt, in 1977, I think it was, 78, 77, located the spot again, did, had a closer look, and said, this, this, is, this needs better investigation. It's a good candidate. And at the time there was an earthquake and it dropped all the soil away so you could look at the sides and it made sense. Yeah. You could see the remains of rib timbers. Now, Ron White did a fantastic amount of research. He's passed away now, as you know. Yes. It's never been excavated. He tried a number of times, but for whatever happened, whatever reason, the doors closed. They got close, but they never quite got to excavate it. He did, on one occasion, with the governor of prison, they dug a hole and they found some petrified wood and he drilled holes and found animal hairs inside. But it's like the doors seemed to close whenever they wanted to excavate it. Just this last year, the doors have opened. Maybe it's God's time, I don't know. But Political the, situations have changed. Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. It's, it's coming from the government. The government's opening doors in that area, and part of that is we have access to the site now. So what we're planning in two months' time is to dig a small trench on the site, maybe two by three metres, to prove that there is a boat underneath. Because the critics will say, no, no, it's just, that outline is just natural. It's a fluke of nature, you know. Okay. It's right length, okay, it's close to the right length. They'll say, actually, it's exactly the right length. <laughs> is it really? Okay. Yeah, it's exactly. They'll okay. say, well, it's roughly the right length, and it looks like a boat, but it's just natural. But if we take the dirt away and, and sink a shaft, we're going to see what's down there. And that's what we're hoping to do this coming May. Now, how are you going to determine where to dig? Good question, yes. We have a friend who has a good radar unit, a very high professional, you know, quality one, and he's going to radar scan the site, 
and using that data we're going to pick out the most obvious anomaly, shall we say. Ron, apparently on his radar, saw two tanks on one end of it, like big round oh, cylinder okay. ships. So if we can spot those, that'll be a good place to do. It might be a water Could have been. It could reservoir. Have been, yeah, it might have been fresh water for... Mm -hmm. We don't know. Yeah. Well, this is exciting. Now you're starting just in a couple of months. Yes. It's January, at the end of January, March, April? Probably in May. Okay. In May, okay. Three, three months. Yeah. Three months, okay. Yep. You're going to have a website? Yes. Yes. Where, where can we find updates on this? Okay, genesisarc.com. <laughs> Easy enough. There you go. <laughs> okay, genesisarc.com. Yep. Uh, you're going to have updates, blog site, whatever is happening, and you have some, you have some specialists with you too yes. that, that yes. will be analyzing, that will be helping you to, to break down the data and to establish fact. Yes, exactly. What we may be able to find, and based on Ron White's work, he drilled holes in the site going back to the 80s or 90s and took samples from inside the site and found animal hairs, exotic animal hairs, not native to Turkey, yeah. inside the formation. Now what that means is if we're digging down and we find a layer of animal hair, we can save those obviously, and they can be analyzed to determine what they are. They have DNA in them still. Yes, exactly, good point. DNA is preserved in old animal hair. Animal hair preserves DNA quite well, because apparently hair is waterproof. And okay. the DNA inside is preserved for long periods of time. Okay. So we could analyze, like say we dig down and we find animal hairs at the bottom okay. layer. We can determine what that animal is. And in theory, if the whole site's excavated, we won't be doing that in May, but down the track, we could plot out where the monkeys were, where the zebras were, where the giraffes were, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is exciting. This and is a look back 3,500, no, no, not 3,500, that's the crossing of the Red Sea. We're looking back, 43, what, 4,000, 4,300 years yeah, exactly. exactly, okay? Exactly. Another thousand years more. That's right. And so if, if we could come up with a zoo plan, you know, say the lions were here, the, the, the kiwis were here, you know what I mean? <laughs> the koalas were here. What, what would that say to the world, that this object was? Not a naturally, natural, not, not a natural formation. Right. <laughs> Can you think of any floating zoo in history? <laughs> Only in the biblical account. Right, exactly. <laughs> now, uh, if we find all these things, if you find them, uh, this would be exciting evidence. Now, also, as I understand, Ron claims to have found some exotic metals that don't that did not exist in, until modern times. Yes, um, my friend, you know, Kevin Fisher did some analysis on samples uh -huh. he took, and they found metallic aluminium in the site. Now, aluminium occurs in nature, but not in the metallic form. You have to process it to produce metallic aluminium. You don't okay. find metal aluminium in nature. It's, you know, all the oxi oxides, etc. Yes. So, and titanium has been found on it. Now that, that was just, that's just a recent alloy yes. that supposedly we invented. <laughs> well, it appears they invented them before the flood too. Okay. <laughs> that's why it's, it, it's a, it really confirms that intelligence existed long before our modern society. Yes, yes. Ellen White says, Arts and sciences that were superior to ours today were lost in the flood. So they had advanced beyond where we are. At least in White's day anyway. I don't know if they had computers, but maybe they did, who knows. But all that's obviously been buried at the time of the flood. So people don't appreciate what civilization was like before mm -hmm. the flood. Maybe this might reveal something. Might. Who knows? We'll be praying for you. This is very exciting. Right. Now, as you've dedicated your life, and maybe it's part of your life, you have another life too, but uh, this is part of your interest and special passion. Uh, you do this for a reason, not just because of curiosity, you're not just an adventure seeker, you do it to confirm God's Word yes. as well. And what, yep. what, if, if I had to ask you on your heart, uh, to open your heart up to our viewing audience there that, that's watching, uh, what, what would you say to them as far as uh, what, do you, what would you like for them to gain out of this information that, uh, that is being exposed, confirming God's Word? That's a good question. Well, look, I was brought up in the church to believe the Bible, but when I went to college and high school, you know, you kind of go through evolutionary-minded biology classes, and to be honest, I got to the point where I thought, what's truth? Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. This is my, this is the experience I had. Conflicting data, conflicting teachers, uh, yeah. different opinions. Exactly. And was what I brought up to believe as a Christian, is it true or is it fairy tales? And I, I came back to the Lord myself in my 20s through faith. But what really struck me is if during those years when I was doing biology courses, what if 
there was compelling evidence that the Bible was true. What if you could find Pharaoh's army on the Red Sea? What if you could find Noah's Ark and all the remains of the animal hairs, etc.? You know, this is compelling stuff to show, <laughs> compelling evidence to show that the Bible is true. Now, for us who are Christians, we don't need that. We believe the Bible by faith. You understand? That's, that's great. It says it, we believe it. Exactly. And there are people out there who will never be convinced no matter what you offer. But between those two extremes, should we say, between the two groups, there's a large body of people who sit on the fence who, if they're presented with some clear evidence and refutable Honest-minded people. Yes. They just need evidence. Yeah. Exactly. If, if it was shown, if this was proven, this is Noah's Ark, and all these animals are on board, they'd go, okay, I've got to reevaluate my, my world paradigm, should we say. Perhaps evolution doesn't hold as much weight as what we thought. Maybe there's something to the Bible. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yes. It, it opens doors that would otherwise just be closed. So, so what would you tell our viewers in, as, they, as they follow this? Uh, okay. You're searching, and, 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 and we're expecting you to find this, but, but honestly, we have to wait and see. Absolutely. We've got to be totally objective. That's right. We're totally fair. But you know, we're living in a day when talks about darkness covering the earth, you know, the, you know, the verse in the Bible, yes. like waters cover the sea. And God is going to turn that around, I believe. I'm sure you understand that. <laughs> He's going to give everybody a fair chance to accept by faith what we read in the Bible and the Gospels, mm -hmm. that Jesus did come and die for us, you know what I mean? So if there's any barrier to that, like the evolutionary paradigm blocking people believing in the Word of God, God, I believe, is going to take away those barriers so everyone has a fair chance. So that everybody will have a fair chance to evaluate. Because yes. God is a God of fairness. Absolutely. And everyone is going to make an intelligent choice whether to take the mark of the beast or not. Mm -hmm. And so I believe God is going to pour out, pull out all the stops, shall we say. Pour out light. Um, the Holy Spirit will be poured out. Everyone will see clearly the issues. Do you know what I mean? Like um, Daniel chapter 3, you know, the test do you bow down to this oh, image or not yes it's yes. going to be a clear-cut choice you stand up or you kneel down but you know you know what you're doing yeah if that makes sense yes. <laughs> so that's the reason you're doing it you want to be able yes. to be used by God to bring out the evidence yeah exactly okay. yeah very good so, well um, you have heard a little bit about this uh, exciting uh, event about to happen in a few months uh, I'm going to be following it I hope you will follow it too and most of all come and join us yeah. Really? Is it yeah. open to being joined absolutely, by people? Absolutely, absolutely. No kidding. What's the date then? Uh, probably about May 20 we'll start. May 20? Give us a give us an email address that people can write to make arrangements if they want to be part of this. This okay. is exciting. You don't want to miss this. If you have a chance to do... Yes. Um, what? Or on the website? Yes. Or email me at ross at discoverynews.net. Okay. Ross, R-O-S-S, -S, at discoverynews.net. Okay. Or, or ross at genesisarc.com. Oh, also there. Okay. Ross at genesisarc.com. Yeah. If you're interested in participating, the invitation is open. I wish I could have. I'm booked up. I can't make it. But if you're interested in making it, uh, log on, get the, get the address uh, or email that you just heard, and write to uh, uh, Ross and ask him about the possibility of being there. I think it would be exciting if you could have a part in that. Most of all, if you're, if you're there when those discoveries are made, standing where only Noah stood before. If that happens, you want to be there. And if it's not going to happen, we're going to find out. If it's not there, we will soon know. God bless each of you. We're grateful that you tuned in. Uh, especially, I want to thank you that uh, you faithfully watch these updates and you will tune in and keep an eye on it. Share with all your friends too. Thanks a lot. God bless.